and welcome to the Five Years Land Podcast. Pod two two eight. Sponsored, I think, yeah, two to eight. Sponsored by Vector Printing for your printing embroidery you needs. Go to vector.co.uk. It's Vector with her. Okay. Okay. And JCIS, the Global Research and Brand Consultancy from South London. Visit jc-is.com. I will. This is the official I will from David Zendikar. It's officially, I'm yeah, back. Back mm. on the pod. Back on the pod. Absolutely, good to have you back. It's good to be back, JD. We're it is JD, isn't it? Or is no, it, it is. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? You just morph into one, you two. Unbelievable. How are you? I'm beautiful. Good. Uh, thanks for coming back on the pod. It's fine. Thanks. Well, I've, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been walking marathons and going to weddings. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had the marathon walk. Yeah, don't, don't, say, about that. don't say coming back on, because that makes it sound like it's a temporary thing. When He's, not, he's one of the boys. Yeah, you're on the boys. He's just had a couple can, of weeks we can, off, We can all. talk about that later on, once okay. you've spoken to the other guests. Kevin Day. Hello there. And Ed Knight. Hi, how you doing? Uh, very well. Now, we need to start this podcast with some sad news, unfortunately, because someone that you know well, Kevin, uh, Sean Hughes, unfortunately passed away today. Uh, yes, I think judging by the uh, reaction on social media, many Palace fans have asked that we acknowledge Sean's passing. I I knew him very, very well through comedy, obviously. Uh, James Endicott knew him very well through music. And Palace. Uh, and Palace, and Palace of yeah. course. Um, Mainly Palace, actually. Yeah. He supported Palace for one of those odd reasons that many people come to Salas Park. It's uh, bizarrely in the 70s. There was one year where Irish TV showed English games live at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and him and his dad liked the Palace kit and that was enough. And Palace became a very important part of his life. Sean was a, a handsome, vibrant, roaring, young, talented comedian and it's very difficult to think of him dying in these circumstances. But mm. one thing Sean never was, was maudlin or sentimental and he would have hated the joy of Saturday to be marred by talking about Sean. So mm. the, the best way of uh, celebrating his passing, basically, is to celebrate a Palace win. Mm. Absolutely. Um, mm. So, yeah, very best of luck to Sean wherever he's going. Absolutely. And I echo all those sentiments. Yeah. Yeah, I went mm. to many games with Sean yeah. Uh, yeah. in the 90s and um, we had a lot of fun times together, home and away games, and I know he would be one of the happiest people <laughs> in the world right now. And he was. Uh, after, I'd, I'd say at five o'clock on Saturday, he would have been as happy as anybody yeah, in yeah. this pod, without a doubt. Uh, yeah. He was one of the original rock and roll comedians, and he was good mates with that Palace team, sort of 80, 89, 90, 91, especially Eddie McGoldrick. Mm -hmm. And also, James managed one of his favourite bands, a Tinder Stick. So, yeah. uh, yes, but that's the, that's the sad news. But he passed over the. What became one of the best weekends of the season. Absolutely, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and after one of the biggest Palace results in yeah. in recent yeah. history, really. And, yeah, well, they're a yeah, this is the last Chelsea. time we beat Chelsea, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Three times out of the last five games, isn't it? Well, so one wow. of my mates yeah. is a Chelsea fan texted me saying, this is your cup final. And I said, I think you'll find we lost the cup <laughs> final. <laughs> <laughs> we hate cup finals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, also, I think um, before we start properly, I'm sure that there will be a lot of questions saying, is this the start of something... Uh, is it a turning big. point? Is it a turning <laughs> point? Is it a dead cat bounce? Uh, this was something that was mentioned all the way from the ground to the portions afterwards, and we all decided that that wasn't the subject for, con for conversation, that we simply didn't want to talk about whether it was the start of something big. We okay. were going to turn, just enjoy the the occasion and just talk about it for what it was rather than get well, carried away about what it means in the future. Well, in that, I mean, I mean there's a long way to go of in the course, season, yes, so, but, but where... I guess my question is, where did it come from? Because I don't think anyone expected that, really, especially after the run we've Wilf. had. Well, Wilf. Mm. Wilf and getting a goal within 10, 11 minutes. Yeah. And then that just the, re the relief lift off everybody's shoulders. And, you know, let's be honest, uh, there's been some really good performances so far. And it's just, it's just need that little bit. And, it, and it, people always say about football, you need a bit of luck, don't they? And mm. I think getting that deflection, that was our little bit of luck. Thank goodness it happened after 11 minutes. And I think mm -hmm. that and the crowd, mm -hmm. I mean, I actually wasn't there. I'm just telling. I the just, atmosphere was incredible. Was, yeah, the, was absolutely incredible. There was a piece, I think it was on Football Focus or Sky, when this guy was on a statistician who said that, a officially, statistician, mm -hmm. officially, we are the unluckiest team in the Premier League until... Oh really? In term, yeah, in terms of I, it went down with some laughter, but he said that actually in terms of you know, shots that we'd had and saves and oh, this is the expected goals thing. And well, it's more than just that. It was, but and I, I think Wilf obviously made a difference. Of course, he did. Um, Julian made a difference without a doubt. But I just, I think it's got to be more than that. And because right from the start there was a plan. Hmm. 
and you could see how well organised they were, and you could see how well they executed. But not only that, just we were positive. All the way. Even in the last <laughs> five minutes, we had the left back popping up just outside the six yard area. Yeah. Mm. Even in the five minutes Should've of injury scored. time, in the five minutes of injury time, Twice. we spent more time in Chelsea's half than we did in our half. We we didn't just sit back and and accept the inevitable siege. It was a completely different. So, and, and what was interesting as well, there's three players I think need uh, mentioning in particular. Uh, Schlupp is one of them because Schlupp played in the sort of between Townsend and Zara, but a little bit deeper. So yeah, he was sort deep. of an emergency fireman. He was just like plugging gaps everywhere and was yeah. brilliant at it. PVA hasn't got the, the uh, credit I think he deserves, but also Joel Ward. I mean, we right. right from the start, as soon as we saw the way Chelsea were lining up, we thought because already in the pub at two o'clock it had been, yeah, you know, the Paulson's murmur was like it was nearly a right. It's like, what the how the yeah, well, it's especially, not, especially, well, especially when he's yeah. on the bench, yeah. but then and then as Ed pointed out, comes on. you see the way Chelsea line up, and that you know, the that left back, the, the wing back is just like literally yeah. across the half and Hazard already. as well on the left, and, but it, Wardy was great, he was really good. And but what I couldn't understand was that you've got players who for the for the, since August have been desperate not to touch the ball didn't want the ball anywhere near them and suddenly they wanted the ball they kept the ball they passed the ball they I moved somewhere else and they passed it was a completely different I think I think the one person you haven't mentioned is um, is Roy Hodgson Yes, I think I think you I think we've got to we've got so to. So what did Roy? What did he do then? He, different this week, or was it anything? Organise them. Well, I think he just needed that break. He needed that two-week well, break. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's our third. You know, we had we had Man City and Man United. What was the other one we had? Uh, well, Southampton was his other game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's his fourth game. We had two weeks. He'd seen what we could do. He'd seen that what, what you know what players we had. He knew what system to play. It's just amazing management. Well, I, mean, it, I was about to say it was something that happened during the game. It was like the turning point in the mentality or whatever but it was really from the start that we were was it Roy said Roy said to us in the stands he was like this is the, the first six minutes of the best six minutes we played yeah, all yeah. season yeah. I mean yeah. Roy that is rather than yeah, Roy Hodgson Hodgson oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 in the stands yeah. 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 that's not he just came up yeah, yeah. strangely enough after the the marathon walk you remember when Steve Parrish was there chatting to us in the pub yeah. uh, when he very kindly put money behind the bar despite the misgivings of the health professionals who had organised the walk he said, <laughs> he said the last thing you should be doing now is necking pints of lager and cider and which, standing around and stay, yeah, <laughs> but legally we pointed out we were no longer under their care but when Steve was chatting to us afterwards he, he said that he would, uh, the Hodgson had thrown off the Mr Nice Guy thing that in training he was getting at, at he said as, getting, as, at as, 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 getting at them like Allardyce used to get at them but I think as well a lot of people point out Benteke not being there forced us into a different way of yeah, that's true. playing because we're very one dimensional under Benteke 4-4-2 four, four, almost wasn't it well, it's kind of four, four, almost. 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 Sort of, though. It was sort of four, four, three, then Schlupp and then the two. But Townsend and Zahar just changed all the time. They just mm. they were so mobile. Yeah. Chelsea got three centre backs who didn't have anyone to mark. Yeah. So basically, we, but but it's, I still can't get over the fact we did it for ninety minutes. That's the yeah. most interesting thing. Mm. And even after they scored, we kept on the front foot. We were positive. And it was, they just looked like even a uh, Wilf who's not one hundred percent match fit. You know, yeah. was but running to the, to the I, final minute. I think yeah. Wilf, apart from his impact in the game, had a lot of. In in the week building up to the game, he's been very very active on social media. Yeah, he's on the Premier League show talking about how yeah. he wants to do right by the fans. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that it's a positive feedback loop because yeah, yeah, people no, see no. that and go, look how excited he is to be. Mm. No, it's true. Playing yeah. on Saturday, be back in the in, in the and team, and that will affect the fans and the players around him. And as the stuff. fact that twenty four thousand people were chanting his name because he had yeah. a, he had yeah. a, he had a veiled dig at Hodgson in the standard talking about how he needed to be loved and have an arm put round him and. It was Hodgson was the manager who didn't pick him for four yeah, years, yeah. basically. <laughs> and yeah. as he said, I didn't particularly want to play for the Ivory Coast, but they came and said nice things to me. So yeah, yeah. that was clearly his way of letting Hodgson know how to manage him. Mm. And also the Palace fans, you could see Wilf lifting like just before kickoff, twenty four thousand Palace fans mm. singing his well, name, and Julian as well. Yeah. You know, Julian walks out into goal and they're chanting his name. And Playing the two of them, we never do that for Hennessy. And, and well, also the ultimate, if, ultimate fan service. If, if Julian had yeah. made a mistake, we wouldn't have got. On his back, like no. we would have done with Hennessy. Yeah, no, that's true. We would have kept behind, but also Julian was... Also, Julian didn't make the mistakes. He that, make that, that one that he pretty much yeah. scooped out of the f***ing goal. Sorry. So, that's all right. <laughs> but it's not only that, but also... It's somebody, been a while. As somebody said afterwards, you know, all that, all that game management that we hate to see other teams doing, yeah. Julian yeah. was doing it right from the start. Every time Julian caught a ball or got behind a save, it took him a minute to get up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm. like, yeah. It's, you could see that. And, it yeah. was like, and he, he was shouting all the way through. He was talking to Saka all the way through. Yeah. 
clearly didn't shout at him, don't back heel the ball. Oh, the, oh, uh, <laughs> but also at the end as well, Julian, we, Julian led the players over to the to the homes down to the halfway, and that's what you want to see from You want to see it mattering as much to the players as well, it matters Well, because Julian too, just gets it, doesn't he? Of course he, he does. Yeah, of course he does. Yeah. Well, they, all get it, they all get it, I mean, yeah. but you can't... How many times have we had a game where you say you simply can't pick out who was... Well, Wilf probably was, but everyone was eight out of ten. Hmm. All the way through, yeah. and they, they just look like different players. And it's but how did Roy, how did Roy manage to do that to sort of lift the confidence from a team that got bad at Old Trafford, bad at City, and we, I don't we know. Same I don't they, looked, they looked they didn't look confident. But it's, 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 it's a huge turnaround. I, 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 isn't I, think, it? I think maybe I think maybe what Kev said about there being no Benteke there, and you're forced to play a different system. Mm, yeah, I think that probably had a lot to do with it. Yeah. I think Wilf coming back. I think Sacco. just them having. I think Sacco being there minus the back heel, of course. Yeah, I just think I don't know. I just think you just got to the point. They just got to that point. There's, there's, we've not been playing that badly. You just got to that yeah. point where you just yeah. it, it, something had to click. Yeah. I think one James, day it had to click. Also, Chelsea yeah. let uh, let us get into them really, really early on, yeah. and it was kind of you kind of got that feeling of oh, this is doable. Yeah, yeah. Like like we just haven't been doing it. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was better than the Arsenal game. And this yeah, was, the Arsenal game. We were resilient. We were well organised. We were strong. That this was I don't fo- think they were expecting fo- us we to, to play how we well, played and also the circumstances going into the game as yeah. well the fact that we yeah. haven't scored in seven games but the, pass, yeah. but the, passes, yeah, the passes we were putting together was, was great I think I think James is right as well I think the fact that we had hardly any players away on international duty yeah, yeah. definitely and he also Roy didn't give him a day off which apparently is yeah. standard practice he had them in every day mm. working yeah. on but yeah. you can see just even I think just after Chelsea scored they had Virtually their only period of pressure is like two or three minutes, but you could see the organisation. The two mm. lines of four were mm. perfect, with Schlupp dropping back on top mm. of them, Townsend and, and Zahar defending on whatever wing they were Chelsea were attacking at. And it was a world of difference, even when they beat us 1 0 last year, mm. when we were all over the place. Yeah. It was just. And again, you come out of the second half, you think. Well, it's going to be it's going to be the Alamo for. But it wasn't. No. It was it. But we actually, we're actually. <laughs> Everybody loved it. It's amazing. But let's be also just to not to dampen anybody's enthusiasm by all this, but this is the way that we all know we should have been playing and we can play. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's yeah. been so frustrating us over the yeah. last seven games. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, in a weird way, personally, I don't know about you guys, I've not been getting that I have been down about it, but I knew that one day it was going to click. We had yeah. the players. And it's not one of those fans who goes, Oh, we've got the players, we're going to be all right. Yeah. We have the players. We actually do have them. Yeah, and I think they have no it, excuse. I think it was this moment was always going to happen. It's amazing it happened against Chelsea. Yeah, they 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 weren't at one hundred percent. Let's be honest. But even saying that, they still got. An we still deserve team. to win. We still deserve to win. We, we and can, played football. And yeah. it was it was yeah. all those tight passes. Yeah, that was confident. Well, that was it. The tight passes. Yeah. It was people wanting the ball in areas where the start of the season they didn't want it. MacArthur, just, just simply didn't want it. Was MacArthur just say, was great. Yeah, he was brilliant. 